SharePoint Premium has a ton of features and some of them are even free. Let's go through all the different features in SharePoint Premium and talk about what they do. Now, I've covered some of these in the past on my channel, but I've never really gone through all of this stuff. So let's just get straight into it. Now, SharePoint Premium is divided into three different categories, content processing, content governance, and content experiences. So I'm going to go, I'm going to split this up into those three sections so that you can kind of see how everything is grouped together and how everything kind of is, is related to the other things in that particular category. So let's first start out with content processing. So document processing is the first one of these. And what this one does is essentially reads in your document. It pulls out specific parts of that document and it moves that, that data that it just extracted into their own columns in a SharePoint library. So that's really the core of what this thing does. Now it's split into a few different pieces. There's, because you're gonna have an AI model that you're gonna have to train uh, so that it knows, so the SharePoint Premium knows how to extract the, the, the content. It needs to know what the document looks like. It needs to know how to find the different pieces of data that should be extracted. So you'll see this in the form of pre-built uh, document processing, structured and free-form document processing, and then unstructured document processing. Uh, but the the process is is a, is a little similar between all three of them as far as how you're going to train the model to find your data and move it into the different columns in your, your library. So that's what the document processing thing is all about. In fact, most of these are going to be like this in the, the content processing uh, category. It's, gonna, it's all going to be about extracting information from the source material. And in most cases, it's moving it into metadata columns so that you don't have to manually tag or categorize your, your documents. A lot of that is just done for you. Content assembly is another one that I think is really neat. It's not a new concept, however, because it's basically document templating. So here's how that works. You're going to have a similar to before, you're going to have like that model that you're going to train and the model is going to know where different pieces of information fit into that document. So then once you've got that, you'll have this document template. And when you want to go create a new piece of, uh, of content, a new document, you'll bring this interface up and it'll ask you what are all the different fields that should be filled out in here. Uh, it'll look like metadata that you're filling out, but as you're filling it out, it's going to be completing the document. Now, this is a little different than our normal Word document because this is going to be a more structured and more consistent approach to templating to make sure that all of those documents of that type, if it's a contract or something like that, or an invoice, that everything looks the same. Everything's going to be consistent. That's really what the content assembly feature is all about. Now we start to get into the rest of these different, met the metadata extraction type features. And the next one's going to be image tagging. Now this is a little bit different than a lot of the other metadata extractions because you're looking at an image. It doesn't necessarily have text on there. That's a different feature. We'll get to that one. But what the image tagging one does, and I've, I've shown this on my channel already. I've got a dedicated video for this. But what it does is it's going to be using AI vision, I believe, is going to be the, the feature behind the scenes. And it's going to look at this image and see, uh, it'll determine what's in it. It, 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 I use bicycle images in the one that I did, but it's going to find the different objects or components of an image, and it's going to be filling out a one, one metadata column. I think it's called image tags, and it's going to add in all the different things it sees in that image. So you'll be able to use all those different tags to start to filter a image library to find particular images that you need. Like an asset library is a great example of how this image tagging feature could be used. Now, it's not perfect, as some, some of the people have pointed out in the comments on there. Uh, you know, there's stuff that's a little that's missing. There's obviously room for improvement, but it's far superior to manually tagging things individually because this is a lot more precise, in my opinion. So that's really what image tagging is all about. Next, we've got taxonomy tagging. Now, this is a really, really cool one. Uh, there is an, a more improved version we're going to talk about in a minute. But what the taxonomy tagging is, is it's going to look for certain components of your 
document that you've uploaded. And it's going to be comparing it to manage metadata terms. So it's going to be terms in your term store that are going to, the content's going to match things in that document. Think of client name, think of property address, uh, things like that, things that you might have defined in your term store. And those things are going to be showing up in this document somewhere. So this is going to be finding the term in the term store that's in the document. And it's going to add that as the value in that particular column. So if you've got things like a uh, property address or client name, you have the, all those different columns lined up uh, or added to your, your library, then what it's going to do is it'll look in the document, it'll start to fill all those columns out. It's a very structured approach to filling out the metadata things because they are they are based on things in your term store. So it's a, it's a rigid structure, but it, it does ensure precision and accuracy with, with your, your metadata fields, which is pretty important, I would say. So next is autofill columns. Now this is a, a pretty new feature. It was announced uh, earlier in 2024. What this one does is it kind of fills in the gaps and gives you a little bit more power than what was in the taxonomy tagging. So remember with taxonomy tagging, you had to have terms in a term store that met matched content in your documents. With autofill columns, it's kind of everything else. It's not based on managed metadata. And so you could have a yes, no column. You could have a choice column. But here's how the here's how the engine knows what to extract. With the autofill column, you're going to put in an AI prompt to describe what the value should be provided, what how or how to determine that value. So that could be a question that you're asking about the piece of content. Like, does this product require assembly? Now, those that exact phrase may not appear in the document, but AI and natural, uh, there's an LLM that, that's, that's used that will be processing your document and it was, it will answer the question based on that prompt. So based on that, it will understand the content. And so if, if, if the product requires assembly and there's a reference to that in some sh shape or fashion in the document, then the LLM is going to know that and provide the value for the metadata column. And based on the column type, it will know what type of value to provide. Should it be a yes, no? Should it be a, 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 free, a single line of text? Should it be a date time? All those things are going to be possible with these autofill columns, and it's incredibly powerful and very, very cool. So that's what autofill columns are going to do. And if you're watching this as the video went live, they are going to be rolling out starting this month, May 2024. Document translation is going to be the next one in here. And you've seen, you might have seen the video where I've covered this already, but what this is going to do is translate a document from one language to another. You can trigger this translation in a number of different ways. Uh, some of the, one of those ways actually is the processing rules, which we'll, we'll be talking about further uh, into this video. But in essence, just remember that the document translation feature is translating documents. Pretty simple, right? Now, e-signature is the next feature in this list. And uh, this is a, it's obviously not a new concept. It's uh, leveraged by Adobe. Uh, DocuSign is another major provider of e-signature type services. But now it's all baked into SharePoint. In fact, you can use this SharePoint one out of the box, or you can still tie into Adobe Sign and DocuSign. So you've got options there depending on where you've already put your investment at. And the way eSignature works is you're going to be triggering a, a, a document signature request. You're going to be sending a request to someone. They're going to get it on their end. They'll sign the document or reject or whatever they want to do on that. And then you're notified. Incredibly simple. Uh, but very powerful, and it's cool that we don't have to use some third-party service anymore to do this kind of a thing. So there's eSignature. Now, OCR is going to be the next one. That's optical character recognition. Again, not a new feature, but it's new to SharePoint. It's new to SharePoint Premium. The way this is going to work, and it's mostly, I think, for compliance reasons, but this is going to let you upload images into a library, uh, document images, PDFs are obviously the, the prime example, but also just like PNGs, JPEGs, like normal old images. You upload these, and if OCR is enabled, then it's going to look at this image and determine if there's any sort of text on there. And it'll extract that text and store it alongside the document. It's probably like a hidden metadata field. I don't think it's filling out uh, yeah, metadata columns. 
but it's going to be recognizing what information is in there. And it is going to be mostly for compliance reasons. So if there's a PII in there, if there's sensitive information in there, then it, Purview is going to be able to apply labels, assuming you've got Purview configured to do that anyway. So you'll have your compliance labels and policies applied to this content as they're uploaded. That's really what OCR is all about. It's making sure that any sensitive information that might be in an image gets protected the correct way. Oh, and that text that's extracted is indexed in search as well. So you should be able to find this stuff based on just searching for some of the text in the images, which is a pretty cool feature. So the advanced file viewer slash annotations um, uh, feature is, is the next one on the list. It's kind of a two for one special. What this is going to let you be able to do is pull up things like um, uh, drafting documents or EPUB files, eBooks, you know, things that really SharePoint doesn't cover right now. Well, this advanced file viewer is going to be able to pull that up and it's also going to be able to let you annotate. So you can be, you'll, you'll be able to draw on these files. You'll be able to, you know, annotate things, add text, add, add lines, circle things. Uh, and all the information is going to be stored alongside that document. So it's not going to be stored outside of SharePoint. It, uh, it's not in SharePoint embedded or anything, anything like that. It's all stored in that library. So it's just a nice thing to have if you need to be able to pull up like a, a PDF file or a drafting document, like something from AutoCAD, and you want to be able to annotate on, on top of that without affecting the original document. Maybe the original document doesn't support that, like AutoCAD. So that's really what the annotation and advanced file viewer is all about. So content query is going to be the next one on the list. So in the in all our previous examples, everything was pay as you go. You didn't have to have a license, but there is a cost associated with using all of those features. As you use it, you are incurring costs. With the content query, now you need a license for it. But only the person setting this up needs the license. Here's how it works. You're going to enable this on a library. You'll configure specific metadata fields. Then you'll go up to the Microsoft search bar at the top of that library, the one where you know you're searching for files. But when you but there'll be a filter button. You click on this and you see all these different metadata fields. And you can filter the document library based on that. If it sounds familiar, it's because it's basically what we can already do with PNP Modern Search web parts. But now you don't have to set up PNP Modern Search and anyone can actually set this up, assuming they have the license. I think it's pretty neat, uh, especially if you don't want to be, if you don't want to use PNP Modern Search or if you're not allowed to use that because it is not commercially supported. Uh, I've heard that that argument before from from organizations. So in that case, this could be just the thing you need to make finding documents easier. The next one is going to be a pretty simple feature, merging and extracting PDFs. So uh, it's pretty simple. You're going to be able to combine multiple PDFs into a single one, or you'll be able to split PDFs and maybe grab just one page out of that and convert it into its own PDF. Pretty simple and straightforward. I guess if you're not using Adobe uh, Acrobat, the full version, I guess this has a use case for it there. So um, there you go. The next one's pretty interesting, and it seems to me like it's maybe an updated version of an old component, and it's the processing rules. So here's how this works. You're gonna set up rules on a library, and it'll be triggered based on certain things. If a file is added, if a field is changed, it'll fire off a rule. Now, the rule can do different things, such as moving or copying a file to a folder. It could send off a notification. It can translate a file to another language. That was the use case I showed in the document translation video I did a little while ago. And if you think about it, it sounds like a much more advanced version of the content organizer that we had in the, the classic days. I mean, actually people are still using that in SharePoint Online. That's what it really kind of sounds like to me is that maybe the next evolution of that uh, in a, a much simpler way to, to set this thing up. And we're finally at the last feature for content processing, and it's the, the premium taxonomy features. So if you've got a taxonomy in a different format, SKOS, I believe is the, the format, and I'm not familiar with that one, but basically this just lets you import that taxonomy into your term store. So it's just a, a different import format. 
Uh, I haven't heard of anyone needing to use this yet, but you may be the first. Now we're into the content governance part of this uh, this whole product, the SharePoint Premium product. And the, the big one for this is the SAM license, the, the SAM, SharePoint Advanced Management. This is, you, you'll you probably see this in the SharePoint Admin Center. You'll see uh, Advanced Management, I think it's called, or Advanced Governance, I believe it's Advanced Management. And this is where you'll be able to configure things like restricted access control, uh, site access policies. This is where you're gonna configure your governance uh, within the SharePoint Admin Center. So you'll be able to set policies to control things like who can download files. You'll be able to configure policies to, to restrict thing, certain features in SharePoint. You'll be able to pull reports from the data access governance section. Uh, there are some free reports in there, by the way. There are free ones, uh, but I believe we're going to be getting some some uh, a lot more reports. Uh, I know some just got rolled out at the M365 conference in Orlando that just happened. We had we got more reports added to the DAG, the DAG reports section. And I think we're just gonna keep getting more and more reports. I think a lot of the ones right now are mostly uh, gonna help organizations get ready for Microsoft Copilot. So there's that, but there's gonna be a lot more reports there uh, that are coming, uh, probably uh, gonna be tied to that that SAM license. This is the, the license that was that is required for some of these things. But for your SharePoint advanced management type features, uh, this, is, this is the part of SharePoint Premium that targets all of those. And then you've got some of the lifecycle management things for sites like inactivity policies, where if a site isn't uh, updated for a certain amount of time, you can take some action, like asking the admin, hey, do you still need this site? Or actually that's asking the site owner, not the admin. So it puts the burden on the site owners to keep their sites updated, keep them fresh. Otherwise, you could do something like archive the site, delete the site, you know, or just do nothing. So you've got options there with lifecycle management. You've also got some things to monitor the admin center activity. There's an activity log where you can see who's made different changes to a particular SharePoint site uh, based on the site properties, like the uh, the sharing settings or the custom script setting, uh, some of those types of things, you can see an aud basically an audit log of that. That's one of the new features that has come out recently as well. And another interesting thing is you, there's a policy where you could block downloads from SharePoint and OneDrive. So that's kind of interesting if you want to um, kind of tighten things down a little bit. But that's part of the lifecycle management or lifecycle policies or features section of SharePoint Premium, uh, specifically the SharePoint Advanced Management, the SAM uh, subset. And now next, you've got some of the other products that don't really fit into some of these other buckets, but they are big, big thing, uh, features like SharePoint Backup, where you can configure your backups for SharePoint, OneDrive and Exchange. There is the M365 Archive feature. I've, I've actually covered both of those uh, products uh, on this channel, but uh, the M365 Archive will let you archive a site uh, and save a, a ton of money on your storage costs. So if a site's not needed, but you're not really sure you want to delete it yet, you can archive that and uh, keep it there in archive for a while, and then you can always delete it. And then there's the advanced tenant rename. So, you know, right now organizations can rename their tenant. So if it's, you know, xyz.sharepoint.com, they can rename it to abc.sharepoint.com. But only if you're under 10,000 sites and OneDrive accounts, uh, once you get to that level, that, that size of an environment, they don't let you do it anymore. But if you have this SAM license, then you're able to uh, go beyond that 10,000. But at the moment, you have to stay under 100,000 sites and OneDrive accounts uh, combined. So you you could definitely, basically, this is just letting you rename a tenant that, that if you have a larger environment. And then the content experiences category is next. Now, there's only a few things in here, but they are continuing to add more, and they are very, very impactful. SharePoint Embedded. Is, is in this category. Now, SharePoint Embedded is basically a headless version of SharePoint. So it's SharePoint without a UI. Uh, you, you're gonna create your own user interface. So this is targeted more towards third-party vendors or uh, uh, software developers who that are gonna create a custom interface for something. And then they're gonna use SharePoint as a back-end storage uh, mechanism. 
Now, why would you want to do this? Well, I have covered that, but one of the big benefits is your data is staying within M365. That means it's staying with Purview. Now, all the benefits of Purview and your compliance controls, all that stay, stays right there. You can also find this content using Microsoft Graph. So you can find the content in the Microsoft search bar. So very cool features there. That's what SharePoint Embedded does. Now, the, the last feature in this is really, it's a, it's a number of different products that are going to be coming out, it seems. It's, a, it's all gonna be based in uh, Teams. So these are Teams apps, and it's gonna be about finding important documents or keeping track of very high value documents, maybe contracts, agreements, uh, things like that, uh, you know, really important things where you, you've got to be able to find them quickly and you need maybe more advanced functionality for that document. So there's an agreements app that was announced recently, actually. And what this does is allows you to work on like a contract and you can send that out to a customer. The customer can make changes and it'll come back to you. And you, there'll be advanced uh, insights there so that you'll be able to see what change was made and what's the impact of that. If it was legal terminology that was changed, it'll tell you what the, what the summary was of like, how does this affect the document? That's a really cool feature. Uh, so that's part of this agreements app that'll be part of Teams, but there's other things that they've already announced in the past, such as keeping track of high value documents. Uh, I think I think they might have called it a business documents app, uh, but they're gonna provide different experiences within Teams to be able to manage these important documents or important content in general, although I do believe it's gonna be based on documents specifically. And these are gonna provide you with a, a, a much more custom tailored experience for those particular uh, scenarios. So that's a ton of stuff to cover, but that's what's currently in SharePoint Premium. Now, I'm sure this video is gonna be out of date at some point because Microsoft's continuing to roll out a lot of stuff to this. So I'll update this video, I'll re-release it, I'll re-record it, whatever it needs to happen, I will make it happen so that you can stay informed on what's going on with SharePoint Premium and all the advanced content management stuff. Let me know what you think in the comments below of this, if you're going to be using any or all of these features. Uh, I know sh some of the ones that are, that are really cool for me. I love the SharePoint embedded. It's, it's in incredibly cool. I like the metadata extraction features, whether it was the, the content processing, the taxonomy tagging, the autofill columns are going to be amazing to try out. I can't wait for this to hit my tenant. Let me know what you think down below. And if you want to see that document translation video, click into here and see how it all works.